to Marble Youth Soccer YouTube channel, what is this channel going to be used for? Well, this is going to be used as an additional learning tool or engagement tool for me to engage the coaches and players and parents of Marble Youth Soccer to answer any questions, provide feedback, provide some kind of um, visual aid that you can keep coming back to so that it's not just waiting for the clinics or for your practice to really engage me with questions or con concerns, maybe you need to see a visual and you just don't have time on the field because you have to go for practice, to work, or you just want to go home. So this way, you can watch on your own at home and ask questions in the comments below and get answers without having to get the question get the answer and then remember the answer when you get home. This way you have some kind of substantial video to watch that you can save, rewatch, and have some way of feedback. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to be talking about, let's say week one and day one. Week one, day one, you're a new coach or you're a coach that wants to you know, get into coaching or maybe you're a parent that would like to volunteer and you're just like, well, I would do it, but I'm kind of scared to get into it. That's what we're going to be doing with this first video. We're going to be talking about how can a new coach that's never coached before or a coach that has coached before but always gets nervous before that first day of practice or maybe someone who's considering it and just wants a little bit of feedback and research before they get into it. So you walk on the field um, and you've shown up at the very time that practice is supposed to start. Then you try and set up while the kids are showing up. You, your parents come over saying, hi, here's Johnny Appleseed. He's excited to play, he's never played before and people are engaging you and you're getting overwhelmed. The first mistake that I always notice coaches doing is that they show up exactly when they tell the parents to. When you're a coach, one of the most important things that you have to remember is you tell parents, show up at five o'clock. Practice starts at 5.30 and you know, you tell them show up at five o'clock because we want to get there early, we want to get warmed up and all these things and that's what you've been told. If you tell your team to show up at 5.30, you need to be there at five. Okay, you should always be half an hour early. The reason why is it helps you get into the mindset, it helps you set up and it helps you to focus on your lesson plan or things that you'd like to work on without being distracted and kind of overwhelmed with all the team. So, I'm a little crazier, I show up an hour early because I like to be able to walk the field, look for holes or any kind of hazards. I like to get in the mindset, it takes me a little bit longer and I like to do that because it helps me relax. And that's kind of the key, we want to show up early so that we can relax, get into the mindset, get set up and get prepared before everyone starts showing up. So once they start showing up, you're not overwhelmed with what do I have to do, what do I need to say, hi, names, things, it's crazy. We can't take it all in. Some coaches can, they thrive on it, but that's okay. Not everyone's the same, but even then I recommend try to show up early so that you can at least get set up. So now that you've kind of gotten all that, what do we do? So one of the biggest things that coaches do is they make that first mistake is they show up, but now they, have, they don't have any kind of um, lesson plan. One of the biggest things is that you should prepare for this like it's a presentation, your first day of practice. And it's a presentation where you need to learn. And what I look for when I'm engaging a new team is the fundamentals, passing. Can you pass with the laces? Can you pass with the end step? Can you go through the little ladders? If it's a middle school to high school team, <clears throat> we wanna see, are you able to control the ball in small controlled settings? With the little ones um, from kindergarten to about third grade, you can do the open fields like, hey everyone, we're going to dribble, use your instep, which is the inside of your foot, or use your laces, which obviously is the top of your foot, and let them dribble around, they love doing it. And you can kind of follow them around, kind of chase them around, kind of encourage them, but to kind of see where they're at with ball control. So that's dribbling around, and that's the first step. Some of them will be all over the place, some of them will just kick the ball and chase it. That's fine, we'll engage that later. Right now we're just trying to get them excited and engaged on the field. Second, I'll work on passes. Can you pass with the right foot? Can you pass with the left foot? Can you pass with different surfaces of the foot? Now we understand what are their touches like. With the older ones, a little more high intensity. For the little ones, it's just about, hey, let's work on passing. Then we want to work on toe taps and in-betweens and things to keep them moving and then get into a nice small side game. Now, one of the things that coaches do is they, they show up, they'll play a game, They'll try to do a practice that they might have pulled up online, some random thing, and then maybe they'll just send them home. 
One of the best things that I've learned from the coaching um, licensing program has been the play practice play to where you have to technically only allot time to about 20, 30 minutes of training, high intensity training, and then we go into the second play phase. So teams show up, they get straight into their little play phase where it can be like a rondo or a keep away or you know, just small side games. Um, about 10, 15 minutes, then you get into your training. So if you have two trainings, do 15 and 15. So you have one that's um, working on one thing, and then the second one's working on another thing, about 15 minutes. If you have three, then you do them for 10 minutes each, and then end with about 10 or 15 minute practice um, play phase at the end, which could be a scrimmage or a small side game that implements your training sessions for the day or attempt to apply those. So if you work on passing, add passing restrictions. If you're working on shooting, make it where there's a lot of shooting opportunities. And that way you really are able to a lot focus, you know, coursework or training work to only 20 or 30 minutes instead of trying to make the whole practice a training session, which can be very difficult because now you have to come up with a lot of different ways to keep them engaged, but stay on task. And it's okay to spend more time on one training than the other because we don't want to move from one training to the next if they don't understand training one. If they don't understand training one, you keep working at it. You keep trying to find ways to manipulate it so that your point gets across to them so that they improve. Uh, and if you have to skip a training session because you feel like it's just not hitting right and go to the second, that's okay too. The whole point is, is that your training sessions need to be a learning session so that they're able to retain it, apply it, and then move on. Um, so it takes a lot of time and patience to do some training sessions with teams because not every team is going to be the same. Some teams will learn really quickly. They're very coachable and they're very easy to teach. Some teams not so much. So we have to make sure that we're making those altercations. And you, you have to some you're gonna have good training days with the best team. You're gonna have horrible training team, horrible training times with the best teams. You're gonna have both and both, and it's gonna work with good teams and bad teams. Sometimes you'll have a lot of bad ones and then a fantastic one, reinforce it. So, it's okay. So, what is one way that you can feel a little more attached to your players? A lot of times coaches will show up, they'll instruct, they'll lead, and they'll do this, and then they go home. Ask your player questions. They love it when coaches engage them and ask them questions. And we have to remember, there is no wrong answer. We have to be like, hi, Johnny Appleseed, what position do you like to play? And this can carry on all the way up until high school. You ask them what they want to play. You've never met them before. Do not make predetermined assumptions on players based on what you observe. They like their positions. They may look like a defender, but they excel as an offensive player because they like it there. They just know how to play defense and they're good at it, but they prefer playing another position. You gotta find positions that people like to play or players like to play because that's the position that they're gonna work the hardest at. You're gonna get the most out of them. Now, does it mean put them there and leave them there? Absolutely not. <laughs> we need to be able to play more than one position, but you want them to have as much time in that position as possible because then their passion, their love, and their skill level is going to go up faster than if you put them at a position that they're okay at, but they don't really like, it's going to kind of gradually increase. You want rapid success, not slow, gradual, because of they don't like it. So make sure you show up asking questions and have a lesson plan in hand. Show up early. That will help you get set up without being too stressed out. And you might be freaked out and everything, but if you do these, these things, you won't look as stressed out. Um, so show up early, show up prepared, and ask them questions. Because as much as you want them to ask you questions, you have to be engaging them as well. Because remember, we're in it as a team, from coach to player to parent. We all work as a team, we all represent the team, and our actions and our attitudes influence the team. So, if you have any questions, be sure to ask them down below in the comments below, and I'll make a video over it just like this. And next week, we will be talking about how to build a program from start to finish for the entire season, and how to prepare for the next. Thank you so much, and see you guys on the field.